I have with me here at the Benin Network Studio, Reverend Canon Timothy Godaro, who is an education consultant, uh, always talking about the issue of certification for skill sets just to ensure that you have that paper backup. Uh, Reverend, many thanks again for coming on the program. Mm. So oh. quickly share with us, I mean, um, back here, unlike other civilized climbs, even if you are a bricklayer, you are a plumber, uh, a salonist, there's certification required to show your proficiency on the job. What is the challenge having a similar structure working in this part of the world, and how do you think we can reinvent that and to make it popular and encourage those who are into some of these skill sets and trades get certified? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I want to thank you for having me. Um, when you talk of certification directly like that, people say, hey, they have come again with certificate. <laughs> so certificate that you have, you cannot operate it. What I'm trying to say, the certificate is describing a person who has it. Mm. But when we take you out to do the work, that certificate is saying you cannot, you cannot perform. So therefore, the certificate and yourself are variants to each other. You are not the same thing. But what we are looking at in Nigeria, the Nigerian government, through the Federal Ministry of Education, as uh, anchored by the National Board for Technical Education, has already have what we call na uh, National Skill Qualification Framework. So this National Skill Qualification Framework, it is a, a nine-level framework. So which means from level one, you can climb to become to, to level nine. Mm. And somebody with primary six can move to BAG. They say, we know the party we take. To from primary six, you can move to PhD. And you know, yeah, gradually. Gradually. A primary six, you finish, you move to secondary school. Mm. SSS, a secondary school, yes. you enter a university. Yes. You have your first degree. The second you degree. Second, the third degree. Yes. So the same thing here on level one. You, you, after graduating your level one, you move to level two. Okay. After level two, like that, until you get to level nine. So the federal government have done a great job by now incubating these, great le these levels of technical and vocational qualifications mm. in the uh, federal scheme of service. Okay. So you have it now when you are on level one. Your salary and all what you are in and what you are supposed to do is already defined in the federal public service. Now, from the national skill qualification framework, you derive what we call the national skill qualification. This national skill qualifications is this level one to level nine. Now, the, we have discovered that many graduates from our universities, from our polytechnic, from our technical colleges are not employable. Why are they not employable? What are they using to teach them? Most of the syllabus or curriculum they are using are already obsolete. And two, they, 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 they end in what we call vocational assessment. What do we mean by vocational assessment? In the university, in the polytechnic, they teach them according to the curriculum. The professor who is there give them assignment to do. They give them work in their workshop. That workshop is not a work-based assessment. It's not a work environment. Okay. So what we are now saying that assessment should be conducted in a work environment. That is, a, 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 in the national skill qualification, we don't talk of a student. We call them learners. 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 So these learners, we have to work in a training center where they are being taught, like any poly university. That is vocational assessment. When they have matured, got this, uh, enough skill in this vocational assessment, you move them into a work environment. It is in a work environment they will be assessed. And if they are found competent, they will be issued a certificate of competency. In that area, they have uh, uh, studied. Now, let me give you. So, national skill qualification is about competency qualification. In academic qualification, if you score 90 over 100, you have distinction. But in the national skill qualification, if you score 99 over 100, 
you are not yet competent. Does that make it more difficult to get no. certified? No, no, it's not difficult. We are looking at competency. In the, somebody who scored 90%, you say excellent distinction. Mm -hmm. The 10%, if he comes across it in the industry, how does he perform? Mm. He it will lack in that area because the assessment was not total. But in national skill qualification, it is total. 100 over 100. So there is a term we use for that, sufficiency. Okay. So sufficiency means that the evidence generated by this learner have covered all the performance criteria. So therefore, what do we use in assessing uh, people who are undertaking uh, uh, national skill qualification? We say it is what we call the national occupation standard. Every trade, every area has its own national occupation standard. Who are the people who are developing this national uh, occupation standard? They have been developed by the industry. Every sector skill develops its own. We call them SSC, Circle Steel uh, Council. Okay. In construction, they have their own. In oil and gas, they have their own. In agriculture, they have their own. Anyone on level one, it is stated in that occupational standard what he will be able to do when he goes to the industry. So when you come, you have a level one, what you can do is written on that certificate. So if you cannot operate it, then we look for who satisfy you competent. So every train assessor who is driving this process have what we call a unique learning number. You can't just certify somebody competent when he's not yet competent. So we don't use derogatory terms there that you are incompetent. No. Either you are competent or not yet uh, competent. competent. So your, your program is ongoing until you are found uh, competent. This, this, this certification or uh, assessment of the person's competence yeah. is based on practical experience or practicalization of the knowledge acquired. Yeah. They are, they are, are there part of it that is written or uh, There is nothing they are going to do in schools, in the university that is not there. So for you to be certified competent, one, you must acquire skill. We must look at your knowledge and understanding. We will look at what we call uh, uh, attitude. So these three ingredients will make you competent. So in looking at skill, we don't look at skill. Skill only is apprenticeship scheme. Where they look at skill, you learn from in a work environment. Mm. Your master is conducted something you are, you are observing him. Okay. After many years, you will be able to operate on your own. That is skill based. But in national occupation standard, it goes beyond that. For every skill you acquire, you more have the knowledge and understanding behind that skill. And your attitude also matters. In the University of Poly, we say you have been found in uh, learning and uh, character, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we also say uh, attitude. Attitude in bad character, the affective domain, characterization. Okay, let, let me, let, what's your take on this challenge that we have in our society today where we don't have people going to learn work as it used to be. Yes. The workshops are empty. It, yes. The saloons and all of these places that you normally will find young men or even young women as the case as the case may be who are there to learn mechanic, plumbing and stuff like that. Yeah. The problem we have is that uh, the government of Nigeria, this national skill uh, framework we are talking of, there is no legislation. Back in it. Uh, since 2013 till today, no legislation. It was launched in Abuja in 2018 at the National University uh, Commission's uh, office. The Minister of Education was there. Other ministers were there. The head of uh, education in the House of Representatives was there. The committee chairman for education in Senate was there. At the end of this talk, 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 it was left behind. It is the Federal Executive Council resolution that stood the MBTE to go ahead and implement the national skill qualification. Mm. That is why it is not being publicized. Mm. Many people don't know anything about it. Some schools don't even know. Only few people who know about it. But now we are trying to present, the vice president has been made the chairman of the uh, Nigerian Ski Council. Mm. And that, uh, the VP is doing a lot of work. Instead of them to be meeting three, three months, they have reduced it that they should be meeting monthly. Mm. All the uh, captains of industry, uh, uh, Alaji Dangote, uh, Boa, uh, all, all those people that are okay. in this, they are members of what, what I'm is coming it? on to okay. your question. Okay. Why is it that people are not willing to learn uh, any trade? Yeah. They don't know that when you learn a trade, from level one, I can drive myself to level nine. And in the public, uh, the public service, who has a PhD and myself, we earn the same salary. 
Interesting. I don't need to go to the university. That's why everybody are clowning to the university, university, university. When they finish, they go and start learning job. Because the skill acquired for them cannot drive the Nigerian economy. So now, now, when people now know that, if I learn for some bricklaying and concrete at level one, I move on to level two. By level three, it's not supervision. By level four, five, we are not talking of management. By six, seven, you are not talking of administration. Definition becomes unstable. Mm. Definition becomes difficult. So some people look at it, is it not brick? No. At higher level, you will see that what is being taken in physics mm. at uh, uh, master's level, they are going to take it in this. But okay. they practice it. Mm. It's not that you say the moment of a force about a point is the product of the force and the perpendicular distance of its line of action from the point. Then equations uh, comes out in mathematics. No. Now you have studied that. Apply it. Fantastic. Reverend, I would love to have uh, more time with you subsequently as we look at this uh, certification issue as it relates okay. to some of the skills that uh, certainly that won't be today. But thank you so much for coming. Okay.